Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brian here with another touch designer tutorial um, with my laser. Um, today's going to be a little bit of a different tutorial. I've had people asking me like the whole process of getting beyond up, getting touch designer up and having those two softwares talk to each other and then how like the laser and projection output kind of work. So we're going to kind of touch on opening beyond and getting beyond started and then opening touch designer and how those two kind of link and then how you send it to your laser and projector. So what we're going to do first is if you haven't done this already um, and you still need to download beyond and get a key, you're going to type in just beyond laser software to your browser and then the first link that shows up, you'll just click on that and it'll send you to this page with a couple options i basically have everything here except for the lifetime license you only need the essentials to connect it to touch designer so i left it there um, lifetime is 994 and one month is 108 so if you're just kind of doing a trial maybe just do the monthly for now it's totally up to you um, and then it'll send you an email with a link to download the software and then some text that is your key that you will uh, need to copy and um, yeah you'll need to copy into beyond and I'll show you where um, but for the hardware I have the unity raw 3 laser which is a pangolin laser so basically I have three things connected into it one is the power two is um, the uh, switcher which um, is an emergency button you can shut off the laser with um, and then three is an ILDA cable and that ILDA cable uh, plugs into the laser it goes across my room and then plugs into this end of this box which is the FB3QS and then you will have this little USB port that you plug into the box that um, comes with it and then plug into the computer via USB-A and from there your laser is basically connected to your PC so I'm just plug it in for power and then plug it in for the emergency switcher and then plug in the ILDA which which connects this to the PC so if you have this I believe there's also like an FB FB4 so there's a few ways to do this and a few different hardwares you can have to plug into your PC but this is the one I have with the Unity RAW 3 laser so once you get this and you have your laser and you have your beyond license you are basically ready to go and from there use this open beyond and if you're new to it this will probably just be all empty and you will um, yeah you can just make your cues if you're even interested in doing it unless you're just trying to jump around right the touch design you can make some cues here and kind of have fun with the laser this is what a lot of laser operators use for shows but um, once you get your key and you download the software, you'll go in the registration, click in here, and it'll ask you to sign in, and you will just put your key in there, and it'll basically just tell you, hey, you're ready to go. And from there, um, you can start playing around with the uh, playing with the laser. So you can just hit enable laser if you're ready to output, and it basically immediately is ready uh, once you get your cues going of getting your laser to operate and yes it says this part has nothing to do with touch designer touch designer does not need to be open this is all via beyond software so once um i mean you don't have to play around with this but if you do feel free it's a nice way to like learn um different ways to use your laser but uh we're gonna jump right into connecting it to touch designer so what you're gonna do or how we're going to start, um, we're just going to kind of improvise here and just let's do like a circle pop and let's change the divisions to like 14 and then let's add a note. And I kind of separate my touch designer files when I'm doing lasers into four sections. So one section is this right here and we're basically whatever we add in this thread is going to be sent to the projector and the laser and then this no one right this no one right here is basically um 
where we split off from the projector. So this is going to be the projector's thread, and then this is going to be the laser's thread. So whatever I put in here is just going to be sent to the projector. Whatever I put in here is just going to be sent to the laser. Um, so we'll get the projector set up first. So let's just throw a geo in here. Cool beans. And then camera. And for my mapping purposes, I'm not going to get too much into my mapping. I'll, I'll talk about kind of how I do it. But we're not going to actually map. If you guys are interested in doing that, I can make a new tutorial of basically deleting all my mapping and we'll start from zero and we'll map my projector and my laser together. But um, yeah, 244 there and then 2048. This will be also probably different based off your, your uh, projector's configurations. And then we are gonna grab my corner talks. Cool. Sweet. And then I'll show you what's inside there in just a moment. Let me just get this up on the projector. So we'll grab a window. Cool. Um, drag it in here. My projector's on display two. Um, projector is really simple. It's just it's directly behind my laser, which are both on a bookshelf behind me and you just plug it into power and then I have a 25 foot HDMI to display port that I plug into my PC. And that is all that is in that. And turn that on and you can see a vague circle. So let's make that bigger. Add a null. Cool, so now you can see that circle I have there and let me actually switch this circle to a grid to kind of show you how the corner pin works. So we'll do that. We'll make this five, five, and do line. Cool. And we'll double the size so that it fits. So kind of how I have my laser and projector set up, anything that leaves this negative one to one X and Y space will not be showed at all. So, um, yeah, with my laser, anything that anything that's like negative one point one, it'll just cut out. And then with my projector, it'll just it just won't show it because you can kind of see here in the render. Anything that would leave that negative one would drift off to over here in the X space, and it would just wouldn't be visible. And then with the laser, the way I have it mapped, it does the same thing. It cuts out at anything outside that uh, configuration. So I have a pretty simple mapping behind me because my laser and my projector are pretty dead on to this wall. So I don't have to do too much, but I basically just kind of like grabbed all these, kind of see me moving it here until... Um, until I got to until I got all four corners into a space that I, I was happy with, you can do like a tan mapper. With I typically use if my mapping is di more difficult. So how that would work is you kind of just open it. And with my whole setup, you could absolutely do this as well. Put a little square there. You put it in the corner. Put it in the corner. In the corner, in the corner, and then you just go to drag whichever one you want in there, the texture, and then you basically just have it immediately mapped there as well. And same thing, just drag it around, and that's how you kind of mess with the configuration. Um, but yeah, I mean, very similar way to do it. Um, honestly, I probably would recommend this way. The corner pinning was a little bit annoying, um, so I'd Next time around, I'm probably just going to always do this. But for now, we're just going to use what I already have set up. So cool. Nice. Now we have the projector all ready to go. And what I just showed you there too, Beyond, that's why I kind of really like Beyond. I have an Ether Dream, and I don't, it's the first thing I had. I don't use it anymore. And that's because the, the laser output I like a lot more. Um, it's more sharp. It, 
it um, doesn't glitch out nearly as much. Um, like with the Ether Dream, if my frames drop for a split second, it would start going out, and it was kind of frustrating because that's what happens with touch design. You're making adjustments, you add nodes, and your FPS will drop very quickly sometimes. Um, and with Beyond, you get this nice, if you go to settings, projection zones, you kind of just get what I just showed you with Cantan Mapper is size, position, rotation, all that. And then you also get this nice little um, free mesh mapping you can do. So what I typically would do is I would get a grid like this you see above me, and I will then send that out to the laser, and I'll just kind of map those together. And once they're all mapped together, we're basically ready to go in the X and Y space. Um, but yeah, so let's for now switch this back to the circle. We'll delete this. And now let's send it to the laser. If you're ready to output to the laser, this is where you gotta be a little cautious because um, I already have it up and running in Beyond with uh, Enable Laser. And this comes activated. So if you're not ready to output your laser, switch that off. And we're using pop, so we're gonna switch it to pop. You have chop, pop, and stop. Um, so whichever um, operator family you're using, I'm using pop, switch that on, and I am ready to turn it on, so we're just gonna flip it on, and you'll immediately see that my laser is outputting that circle perfectly, because I already had it mapped. Um, and then if you wanna do like point frames, immediately switches the points, which is pretty cool. And now we kind of have the gist of it set up. I mean, you can't really see the projector. We'll add some sort of effect in a moment of um, some cool ways we can kind of add some trailing effect or add something where, the, where it looks like the laser and projector are talking to each other. And we're gonna kind of show you the sections there. So. I guess first things first, let's do like a little animation that both the laser and projector are gonna see, which is just a simple, it's just a, a simple LFO where the, the sizes change. So 0 0.5, we're gonna do 0 0.2, and let's do that. And then let's switch it to Gaussian, and let's actually make it like 0.7 to slow it down a bit. Cool. And then there are a lot of ways to do color within the laser. Um, a lot, a new one I'm finding that I really like that I will show in a later tutorial is the lookup texture. And you'll basically plug that in, throw a ramp in there, um, a, a top ramp, change the colors. Um, and then that will be your laser color, which is which is cool. But for now, we're just gonna do an attribute. Another cool thing you can do with the color is, where are you? A random, and instead of add, we'll do set. You'll do color, and now you have a bunch of random colors for your laser, which is fun. But we are going to do just a simple base color for now. Cool. And color, it's gonna go black just cause, or it's gonna go out cause it's just outputting black. And we're gonna reference these values so that they're connected. I'm gonna take away the alpha just cause I like, sometimes my laser a little bit dimmer because it will bleed out the projector sometimes. Um, but we're just gonna make this like a nice little light blue. Cool. And now something we can do is add something that only the projector will see. So let's do like a, a trail, right? Cool. And we'll do the length like 0 0.25. Throw that in there. And now you can kind of see some sort of effect going on. And we can do a little bit more, maybe add a little rotation of like three. Cool. So now you can kind of see that effect where the laser and projector are talking to each other because there's certain, this is why that split makes so much sense. There's, there's certain um, times where you want the projector and laser to see 
these effects you're making, and there's sometimes you just want the projector to see it, and there's sometimes you just want the laser to see it. And this is definitely something you just want your projector to see because we went from like 14 points to 244 with the lines and you got to be cautious of that of setting your laser like a thousand points because it'll it'll bug out a little bit and you don't want to hurt your laser um so something like this is something you just want to send to your projector because it's a, it also just is a cool little trailing effect that you can do um and then maybe like another thing you can send to both of them is like a, a little noise. And like play around with that a little bit. Right? So it's something fun you can do that involves both the laser and projector. And then if you want to go over into this space, um, you can add like a feedback edge see how that looks turn this down turn this up turn this up bring this back down oops down to zero and still too much i don't know something like that pulse it it's kind of tough for you guys to see but sorry maybe add nice feedback to it That. yeah something like that um i kind of like just alone though it looks kind of cool but that's kind of the gist of it you know you gotta get your hardware you gotta get your laser i'm a big fan of the pangolin lasers um there is one below mine the unity raw 1.7 that's around like a thousand bucks uh so you get that you get your power you get your ilda you get your emergency um stop button which all comes with the laser and the fb 3qs i believe i had to buy separately um and that comes with quick show which is a free version of beyond but there is no um touch designer configuration there you can't do anything with touch so um another thing i should mention is for you to be able to use the pangolin shop with beyond you do need at least an educational touch designer license so you could do it with a pro commercial or educational touch designer license you can't do it with a non-commercial unfortunately um but once you get that license and once you get the beyond license and once you get the laser with the with the pangolin hardware uh you're more or less ready to go and you can kind of just start with the laser output first if you want to just do beyond and just do like these cues and have a little bit of fun with it. That's how I started. I started making like timelines here with music um, and I would make my own little shows. And then I've always been using touch designer and I found a way to like kind of connect them both. So um, personal preference of how you want to get started, but this is kind of the whole process that I use to get uh, my projects going. And um, yeah, so I'll have this project on my Patreon. Um, if you're interested um and then of course this is on youtube but if you have any questions please feel free to reach out on instagram um I'm sometimes on tiktok or patreon comment section um but yeah thank you so much for watching and uh yeah have a good one